Apart from having a sad, where do I start? How about I tell you that the history of this orchid is documented in videos, which are linked in the description, so we can cut some time out of a lengthy explanation. And let's have a look at the state of my Phalaenopsis insolence, because I have not taken her out of this bag with sphagnomos since I put her in it. Rescuing Phalaenopsis and I, we just are not a good match. So, <laughs> right out of the gate, please, please give me a like. <laughs> I could really do with a little bit of boost because it's not looking good. Even though I have not looked inside the bag, what I can see outside of the bag, my insolence is probably on her way out. So, let's get on with the update. Sphagnomos cellophane bag. The reasoning behind what I did was because of extreme humidity. Give it a lot of it. Don't let anything transpire as best as possible from the leaves. High humidity, hopefully get some root action going. Uh, you can see this is, yeah, it's not working. I'm not giving up though. Still not giving up. Uh, the culprit being terminal spike, the culprit being also myself. I have never been able to pull the phalaenopsis away from sudden death. But as I keep looking around, there is something happening right there. Can you see that? Now, if that is a root, that doesn't mean she's going to survive, but it would be the first sign the first positive sign that something is happening. Oh yes, she is going to go back into the bag with sphagnomos. But let's have a closer look because what I thought was a viable route I could work with turned out that didn't last very long. She came with five spikes. As I mentioned, one was a terminal spike, but she quickly absorbed one of her spikes. So that's a goner. We can take that away just to avoid any kind of fungus or rot or decay. I'm not going to be touching that node down there. And then there was something going on here where she produced a leaf. She came with this leaf, but the top part of that spike has been absorbed. And then I thought back in the day, a couple of weeks ago, I thought, hang on a second. Maybe she's trying to grow a keiki at the top of one spike, but that spike is also being absorbed now. So my little insolence, yes, my daughter is not exactly upset, but she was kind of also rooting for her, saying, this time you're going to make it, mom. You can do it with this one. Bless her heart to have such confidence in me while I was umming and I. I wasn't trying to be negative because sometimes the energy that you put out is what the orchid can also pick up. At least that's what I believe. So I always approached her with, let's say, hello, beautiful. How are you growing? How are you doing? <laughs> and yeah, my best intentions so far have not worked. But here we are with a little bit of something that gives me hope. So I'm just trimming these back a little bit more gonna let her absorb everything she wants to absorb. I'm only trimming it back for aesthetic purposes and also because as she is inside in a specific area, I don't want her to be catching on things. And we're going to put her back into her bag and see if that nubbin does turn into a root. Wouldn't that just be wonderful? And what I'm also going to do is put a little bit more just plain RO water into the bag. I have not tried the fish method to root her. I have not tried bread. What else was there? Onions, have not tried that. Anyway, I'm talking about all the how to root your orchid quickly hack videos that are out there. I have not followed any of their instructions. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. But what I have done is lay her in a bath of calcium, magnesium, and seaweed in a huge container where I did soak the entire orchid submerged. Then I hung her upside down before putting her into this bag. That I did do. So I'm just going to add some more water into the bag. Just slightly misting because the point is to just keep the sphagnum more damp. 
I'm going to leave her a little bit outdoors as well because it is an overcast day, meaning she's getting much more light here than she would if she were indoors and she's not going to burn. It is also a beautiful humid day and you can see that the misting has created a little bit of water around her stem there. So I'm going to place the bag this way in the direction of the wind so she gets some aeration. That's the plan. So if I had gone with all the fantastic tips with the hack videos on how to rescue your orchid, then maybe, maybe I would be at this stage. I would already have new roots growing. See that? One. There's another one coming out there. I would probably already have a new leaf growing. Yes, I'm being facetious because my don't believe these hack videos. I was serious that that is all garbage. But, you know, just for the sake of a little bit of humor, because I did start out with a sad, I thought, you know, just lighten the mood a little bit. But here we are. We've got a Phalaenopsis, two new roots growing. She is in a pathetic state, but she doesn't have a terminal spike. And thanks to a blessing from Michelle Fucarino, we have insolence 2.0. Yes, I paid full price for her, but I thought, you know what? Michelle Fucarino said in a live stream, why don't I grow Mastavalias? I explained why I don't grow Mastavalias, even though I really, really love them. But Michelle sent me a little something, something to try Mastavalias. I emailed Michelle back and I said, I can't do that because I would feel terrible knowing that I just cannot grow them. They would struggle, suffer, and on top of that, there would be a double whammy of having been given an opportunity to grow orchids that I would really, really like to grow, but I know my climate, it would all be a struggle. Then I would also lose a gift. So instead, I asked her if I find an insolence 2.0, I am going to use that blessing and I'm going to go and get her. And here she is. She doesn't come from the garden center that I featured in my recent videos. She comes from another garden center where I used to get my square pots. So the quality is absolutely, yeah, it's shambles, shambles, shambles. But that is not what we're looking at. We are looking at the future because this orchid has roots growing. And after my sad, now I can say I'm so glad and I'm so, so grateful to Michelle Fucarino for making this happen. I will obviously be transitioning her into Lekka and self-watering and then we can follow her progress on the patio. My daughter, Michelle, is over the moon that there is an insolence in the house. Even though it is a 2.0, she is thrilled to bits. So from the two of us, Thank you so, so much for making this happen. I so appreciate it, as does my daughter. And if by chance you didn't like the video at the beginning because it didn't merit a like, considering I am unable to rescue a Phalaenopsis orchid, which seems to be a doddle for many, many people, now I think it would be a fabulous time to actually like the video because, yeah, she wouldn't be here if it weren't for Michelle. Also subscribe to the channel if you want to follow her progress, her transition, and hopefully future blooms. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.